What's up guys and gals, welcome back to the Sunless Sea. My name is Splattercat and we're playing this haunting little lovely roguelike sailing game which is based roughly on Fallen London or entirely on Fallen London. I don't know, I still haven't had a chance to play Fallen London. I'm looking forward to it though now. I really like the lore of this place and I'll see if I can get a chance to play the browser game. Maybe I'll do another LP and kind of supplement it somehow so that we can learn a bit of lore. We had just left Abbey Rock where we had told the tattletale to a bunch of the sisterhood who were busy flaying each other atop the walls. I'm not really sure why they were so interested in flagellation, but I suppose if you're way out in the middle of nowhere, you gotta find something to do. And flagellation is decidedly less smelly than the other option, which begins with the T. So I think what we'll do right now, I'm sorry, not begins with the T, is punctuated by a T. There we are. I think we should probably set sail from here. Let's launch. And I don't know what happens if you have full terror. My guess is that maybe your adventure ends. And so we're going to cut it close. But we need to make sure that we make enough money to carouse properly when we get back to London. And so I want to touch bases with everybody around here that we can deliver information to. I'm going to try and stay inside the light of the beacon. Ah, oh, we didn't make it. Damn. Okay, so I was hoping we would. But unfortunately, no such luck there. I think up here at Rowena's Rocks they were waiting for news. So we'll relay that around for a bit. Maybe they'll be able to lower our terror, or at least help us out slightly. I don't know. My goals for right now are basically avoiding going insane at sea. Let's stop off. And they actually... Oh, we traded in our... So basically the news doesn't carry over. That's actually not very good. How does it... We told one recent news to somebody and then it doesn't count for everybody else. These people are unrelated. Whatever. I don't, I don't like that. The Dubois Maelstrom. I definitely don't want to fight you. You look like you are way outside my league. That crab has muscles on its muscles. And I don't feel like, and I'm not talking about the clams that are littered all over its carapace. You crustaceo bastard. I suppose we'll head back to London then, and we'll just kind of hope that we get... I hope that we get enough to survive. What is this little guy right here? Let's fight with him. Maybe we'll be able to do something. I mean, this could be the end of my trip, but we're going to try it. So we have a nimble, savage little wolf of a, vest or of a vessel, a pirate steam pinachi. I don't know how do you say that word. I'm not a sailor. We'll engage them. Let's start out with a couple of illuminations, I guess. And maybe one of those. And then we'll open up with a salvo. It looks like they're going to seek. And so we'll start off. We only need 50 in order to take a shot at him. So perhaps we'll go for a third Illuminate. Did that land us above 50? It did not. And so we'll go for a Salvo right here. He's Illuminated enough. Let's go. Oh, hell. And so that actually didn't go so well for us. We'll take another shot. Oh, we need one more. No, 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 no. We need one more. Oh, we're going to take serious damage right here. Okay, this was a bad plan. Largely due to my screw-ups, but it was still a bad plan. We can loot and scuttle her. We could send her home with a prize crew. Yeah, let's send her home with a prize crew because we really need to make money. And so, when you Lex return to London, return to your lodgings to claim your prize money. You now have one times Victor the Spoils. You've lost three crew, a new total of five, and you were fortunate. Watch for the fall of a card. Okay. And where am I looking for right now? I need to get back to London, obviously. I need to go south. So let's go ahead and get started. Hopefully the prize is good. I mean, most of the ships that I've seen in this game cost a lot of money. And so, my sincerest hope is that it's worth at least 100 or something so that we can repair our ship and we can go back out and maybe pirate fight a little bit further, get better at it. I don't know. That might have been the mistake of a lifetime for me. That might be kind of shortening our journey. No matter what, we have to go back to London. We don't have a choice at all there. So, the air trembles and a breath of change passes. Interesting. Interesting. As soon as the gangplank touches the quay side, the terrors of the deep Z lighten. Walk taller, smile more readily, but what dreams may cling. Oh, wow. Okay, so we... Your terror is reduced to 50 when you return to London, if it's higher. However, if your terror was high, you may suffer nightmares later. And so in occurrence, your terror quality is now 50, fearful. And then we gain nightmare strength. I have no idea what that means. We'll have to find out. We'll collect messages from the harbor master. 
And so we've got the blind bruiser would like a word. That's all for now. Something has changed in the neath. Someone wants to sign on. A visit to the Clattermont's tattoo parlor. I suppose we'll do that for that. You're a real zailer now, after all. You could go one of these tobacco and pray places by the docks, but the prices at Clattermont's are reasonable, and his daughter's a real artist. But what sign will you choose? It's going to cost me money, which I don't have. The Dauntless Head. You can commemorate your... Oh, you can unlock it with a Tale of Daring. Or a Tale of Terror. Okay, it increases your iron by two permanently and cures 25 points of terror. You can commemorate your Zaylor's skills, but that requires a Z story, which we don't have. To Splendor, we can recall Brighter Days, which will give us two hearts. I'm only going with the ones that we have the opportunity, but there's one here for every single stat. Iron, I don't think, is going to be helpful. And so I think I'll increase my hearts, because hearts is used to inspire people, and it helps with tests of terror. And since we have a lot of terror right now, I feel like that might be a good call. Actually, if you wanted your memories on your skin, you'd be a squid. This will reduce your terror by 50 once only. I think I'll go with that. There we go. Free and clear. You have no need of ink or needles. Your skin is your own, and so is your destiny. Okay, so that's good. That saved us 50 terror, which means that we were really kind of overbearing. I think basically the game doesn't want us to go above 50 from what I was kind of deriving from that definition they gave us. Like, over 50 seems like it's bad. So maybe it was just my ignorance that led me off right there. But we'll trade in an event in order to make sure that that keeps us below the threshold. London, let's go. And so we can go. Let's offer passage to the tomb colonists since we're going to go there anyways. And so it's oddly difficult to die in fallen London, but when a Londoner is too tatty and wretched to live, they wrap themselves in bandages and take ship for the tomb colonies. Your crew cart, these ab ones aboard in padded coffins, they'll sleep there until the journey is done. The tomb colonists are in your hold. Take them north to the colony of Vendor Bite and sell them there. Okay, so I suppose they count as a... Good. We'll go to the Admiralty office to see how much money we'll get paid out. And so, been trying the original rubberly lumps, have we? We have unlocked a port report. Okay. So we get five echoes from there. And an Admiralty's favor. Abbey Rock. We get 20 echoes from right there. You have a new accomplishment, surveyed Abbey Rock. Okay, so we get 20 echoes. That's good because we needed the money. We gain three. We get another Admiralty's favor, giving us a total of three. And so I think we can actually trigger that new event. You were ushered into the office of the Off Mansion's Pyre, a cramped room with a vast desk. He surveys you across the desk. Ah, yes, the merchant captain of whom we hear such complicated things. The Admiral will purchase intelligence from you. So he's got actually terrifyingly glowing eyes. I don't think I want to be in his office anymore. He's also putting off smoke. That's why I think he may want to be beaten with blankets or something until that stops, but... He does not appear to be the kind of person that I want to start a friendship with, unless he's got crazy powers. We can go in the great game. What the hell is that? Moves in the great game? I have no idea. Turn the wolf stack docks. Let's discover what he desires. Aside from anything to cover those glowing eyes. I guess he's dark spectacled for a reason. Information. Visit a port. We'll be interested in the port report. Visit places of particular interest and we'll be interested in the strategic information you gain thereby. We will pay you well, don't worry. We understand you can't be expected to act entirely for the love of the Empire. His lip curls. What's left of it? Submit port reports? Do we have anything? Okay, so we've been to the Cumaean Canal. Well, if you've been there, I suppose we may as well hear something about it. The fee is nominal, though. So we get five echoes, which puts us up to 34. We're accumulating cash slowly, but I feel like there's better ways to have spent my time. And we could talk about Godfall. And so pirate monks. I honestly have no clue what we're supposed to do about pirate monks. What are they up to? We gain an admiralty favor up to four. And we've also got surveyed Godfall. And we get 30 echoes. That's even better. Maybe we'll be able to pay for the repair of our ship. So we'll leave here. So out into the foggy street, we turn our collar up. We have secrets. I don't know if those are in our hold. Yeah, we have secrets in our hold. We have a restful night. You have known a sweet and dreamless sleep. This will strengthen you when you struggle against nightmares. A tale of terror. Okay. And so the blind bruiser would like a word. And he's got an eight next to him. A say? What does that mean? I don't think that helps me at all. How do we have a word with the blind bruiser? Or is he on the list? C 
Costs us 30 echoes to get more crew. I think our crew's looking okay. I guess we can go... How do I collect the... Oh, the lodgings. There we are. And so we'll read the morning papers. The Canid is threatening war. Okay, so it's the same thing as before, but we could take that out and trade it for something later on. The long-awaited prize. A letter, my lord. We have assessed the da-da-da in accordance with the law of the da-da-da. Please to enclose a money order for... A hundred echoes. Oh, very nice. And then we get our three crew back. That's even better. Good. And so let's put our ship up on the dry dock. So we'll go to... It looks like we may have to undock and redock in order to get the... The bruiser to come back through. But anyways, we can visit the university. Find secrets by visiting... Let's go... Unlocked with Antiquary and no more than zero. Well, we could use our secret to level up by talking to any of our officers, and they'll increase us by... Basically, we can trade in the secret for an increase in our primary stats. So, for example, if we go to the Navigator, his primary stat is Mirrors, and so he'll increase our Mirrors skill permanently. If we talk to her, she'll probably increase our Irons permanently. Let's trade it in at the University. I'm interested to find out. The University has an inexhaustible appetite for secret Z specimens and other tidbits of esoteric lore. Provide a secret to provide to prove yourself worthy of entry. So we've gained a pages. Oh yes, the university's maritime liaison whispers breathily. Oh yes, this is quite a tasty one. Let me explain it to you. She, he explains, teeth glinting. You've gained a page, and so that increases our stats, so we've gotten a little bit smarter. A twist in your tail. You are now antiquarian. I don't know necessarily what that means, but I assume it probably helps something. I don't know. The alarming scholar is mercurial, to say the least. A creature of sudden moods of provoking teeth. Possibly her... Is it her? Appointment at University Maritime Liaison was precautionary to keep his... Is it his? Razor-sharp enthusiasm for causing too many injuries in the faculty. Ah, yes, the scholar whispers breathily. I have a budget for acquisitions. What have you brought me? You have no business to attend to, and besides, the scholar keeps snapping his teeth like a mechanical trap. So perhaps the, you can trade secrets for money here? And so I don't see... I guess these are like our contacts. These are now people that we're able to make contact with as we go through the town. Let's go to London. Put the ship in the dry dock. And L&H will do a fair job for a decent price, but they have a reputation for cutting corners. So they'll take us for 40. They'll take us back up to 74 hull. Oh, they repair up to 25. Okay. The Admiralty Yards we can't use. We can employ Radis Faber Engineers if we had the equipment for it. It's going to cost us 60 Echoes for... This will repair up to 25 points of hull. But they're both up to. One cuts corners and one doesn't. I guess we'll go there. You gained 25 hull for a new total of 56. Okay, and lost 40 Echoes. Everything is probably perfectly all right. Yeah, that's worrisome, but... So to do that, we need 20 supplies. We need the Wretched Mog. Oh, we can't actually do that if we have the Wretched Mog. That actually blocks us. So if we have the Wretched Mog, it eats up all the rats. Well, that's disappointing. Our hull is a little bit battered. But I would like to fight with another ship. If I can actually plan my moves a little bit better, we could come out less damaged. So I guess we'll repair one more time. And we gain... Oh, good. We're up to 81 hull, if that were such a thing. And then we've got that right there. So we can actually buy goods as well. I don't know what to take out to various areas. A visit from the blind bruiser. If I launch... Okay, so there he is. Good evening, my lord, and what a marvelous evening it is, if you don't mind my saying so, and give it, it is my impression you are an obliging sword, I imagine you will not mind at all. And since you are so very obliging, perhaps you wouldn't mind making a little detour via Mount Palmerston with a few articles of cargo if you happen to be in the area. The cherry man will, of course, cover your expenses for this trifling inconvenience. Except the commission, it is, after all, only one trifling inconvenience, or we can refuse the commission. I'll take it. We're indebted anyways. If you would be so kind as to deliver this little gift to our friends in Mount Palmerston, then they will see we gets to hear about it. And when you come back, we'll cover your expensive. 
Bam Voriaggi, as my aunt, who was French by birth, if not by inclination, used to like to say. <laughs> That's kind of funny. If not by inclination. That's kind of the, the subtext right there. You agreed to smuggle souls from London to Mount Palmerston. You now have one unstamped crate of bottled souls. Apparently, the proper receptacle for a soul is one that would be shared with liquids as well. I don't know where Palmerston is, but we're going to have to go find it. So I guess we've got... Let's take a look at our journal. And we'll kind of put these in order and figure out what we want to do. What day is it? Time changes things. So antiquarian, you've combed the Z. I don't. It doesn't appear to have anything that changes anything for us. So I guess we'll go with oh, ever changing. So that actually took us about a week. I think that's how many days it's been. We've surveyed all of those places. Circumstances. We have a proposal here. A shadowy figure has made you a offer. So we can go to Guider's Morn in the east, or we can go north to Viterbite, or whatever the hell that place is called. I suppose we will... I don't know if we have the supplies for it, but we'll launch. I mean, we can hunt crab along the way if we really have to. I mean, I don't really know what to expect from this game. Like I said, this is a little bit of a early run just to kind of see what happens. So let's go north to Viterbite. We'll drop off those coffins, and then we'll go... Mount Palmerston, maybe, if we can find it. Oh, there's another ship over there. We can fight him, but he doesn't appear to be that interested in making fisticuffs with us. So I guess we'll ride on by. Take a look at the charts to make sure that we keep ourselves away from the... There's low Barnet over here. So I'm guessing that Barnet is some part of London that is now sunk below the sea. There's floaties in it. Ew. Like an unwashed glass at a restaurant. It had to happen one time where I got my glass and there was like floaties in it. And there was also lipstick on the rim and I was like, oh my god. Like I realize this is the dishwasher's fault, but... Eh, this is pretty nasty. Dust echoes even a sepia tint to the air. There are waters around the tomb colonies. The hell are those? Oh, no, 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 no. They're coming after us. They're coming after us. This guy. Save me. Save me. Doc, what are you? A light ship. It's clear, so they long for news of home. Let's go ahead and give it to him. We lost two terror, and then we lose our recent whatever. But, on the plus side, we're now no longer being chased by whatever the hell those are. So we're just going to hang out here for a second until those go away. Because I don't even vaguely know what those are. Alright. Let's skip to Malu. Are they attracted to the are they attracted to the light, maybe? Oh, it looks like they might be, maybe. Okay, well let's keep ourselves clear of the rocks then. Recurring nightmares, you've begun to dream of a vast eye, it knows you, and you cannot evade its gaze. Again and again, you are alone in the wide black Z. The eye is aware. The nightmare will come upon you from time to time, inspiring terror. Gain restful nights at your lodgings to help you resist it. If you defeat it, you may gain a secret. So like I said, very much like the Mythos. Kind of an interesting game. I guess we'll try and find wherever the dock is up here. Hornman's Stag. And if we can get ourselves inside the... Oh yeah, they turn back when light hits them. So we've got Tana Chook. And also kind of a mournful cry. Vendor Bite. Okay, so this is the place that we were looking for. Let's go ahead and make port. We made it just in time to get rid of our terror, too. The tomb colony of Vendor Bite. On deck, you can hear the sound of a thousand bandaged dead make as they shuffle and cough. It's something like the world's most restless concert audience or the world's most plague-ridden cathedral. So we can get a dusty glass of wine. Meh, considering our recent conversation. Here they favor candlelight over gaslight. The shadows are swagged like cobwebs. The tomb colonists stand still enough to be mistaken for sculpture until they laugh or cough. One building in three seems abandoned. A corkscrewed street. At the twisty tip of an odd little side street, welcoming yellow light glows from the gilt-lettered windows of a restaurant. A sign reads, Vengeance of Jonah. A beefy tomb colonist bustles up. A gray mustache pokes impertinently out from under his bandages. Come in. Come in. So we learned about the bandaged poissonnier. Poissonnier. I don't even know how to say that word. Because obviously my French is non-existent. So I would assume it's poissonnier. 
We've lost terror. That's good. That's a plus. And so the bandage plus on Ye has long wished to travel, but you'll need to outfit the galley to his exacting standards. Costs 300 echoes, of which we only have 84. If we had a strange catch. Let's see. The vengeance of Jonah is liberal in its approach to edibility. And we need a strange catch in order to make that work. I wonder if that's those things underwater. Sample today's special. Can we go to the shops and sell these? So they sell mushroom wine for 23 here. Or we can sell it here. This game is a lot about just moving goods around. And so it might be a good plan to go get Foxfire candles and bring them back to here. Because I think the price was way lower in London. Do you have tomb colonists? Drop them off here. Okay. So there it is. We dropped off our tomb colonists and we got ourselves 45 echoes for the trouble. Not bad. So the arcade of size, they buy that. They have no supplies. Fuel is quite expensive. The hallow temple. We can get memory of distant shores. We can get recent news. We can sell a vision of the surface. They like news of the surface. Okay. So that's another thing is I guess if you could run all the way down, get tomb colonists, and then also get the vision of the circus, or vicious, <laughs> not of the circus, of the surface, you can get even more. So we'll sell that, I guess, for more echoes because more money never seemed to be a problem. And then the vengeance of Jonah. It's a cramped little place, but better lit than most places in the tomb colony. Okay, so we don't want to do anything there. The tomb colony of Venderbite. Gather gossip. Who's plotting what out in the tomb colonies? Along the coasts of the Untersee, it's remarkably hard to die. The decrepit and nearly dead who leave London become tomb colonists and settle here in bandaged peace. But they don't give up their ties to home or their politics. You gather a hall of complex clues enough to keep your contacts in London interested. We now have one, a port report from Venderbite. Seems good. Is there anything else around here that we've made view of? There's Tanachuk over there. These are going to be the locations that you want to jump in between if you're trying to travel. Was Carissa's point down there? Was that a dock? Or what can we do? Maybe when we travel back, we'll take along the coast to see if there's anything interesting for us. These are light ships, obviously. I don't know how large the map is. There is the distinct possibility the map might be enormous. I mean, who knows? I'm scared of whatever that event is down there, and we could use supplies in the near future. It didn't tell us where St. Palmerston is. So I may look that up in between episodes. I'm sure there's a map somewhere that we can make use of. From the Fallen London stuff. We discovered Pickett's Bluff. And we get 50 fragments. And another group of those little thingies are now coming after us. Well, I think we're about to find out what they do because we have lost speed all of a sudden. Terrify them with blazing light. We can pump power. Oh, they're bats. A bat swarm. Here are little cousins of night. Come to tear your flesh and drink your blood. Don't let them get close. Already your crew cry out in fear. They may leave scars, but they're only vermin. We can terrify them with blazing light. It costs us a fuel. And we have an 18% chance. Yeah, I don't think that's going to make it. Let's go ahead and engage. They only have 20 life. So I suppose we'll flares up. And we'll go for a shot after that. It looks like they're moving a little bit slower than we are, but we don't know how much illumination they need in order to fire their first shot. Let's go ahead and cancel that, and we'll go for another flare, because I don't think we're going to make it with the second one to 50. And then after this one, we'll go ahead and let loose with a volley, and hopefully our attack is more rapid than theirs. Well, their illumination is up pretty high. And so we fire. Oh, hell. Fire again. So there it is. We've killed bats with a cannon, which actually is remarkably more precision-based than you would think. We can record observations if we had ten of them. They are succulent. We can gather up the corpses. They are succulent with stolen blood into the pot. We've got higher hunger. And so, oh, we gain one supply from killing those, so it might be a good idea to hunt those, considering they seem to be reasonably benign. It looks like there's a current up here that's blowing us away. I think I'm going to turn about here, and we'll swing wide on our return journey. Oh, it's snow. That's not a current. It's actually cold up here. So I'm going to swing wide on our return voyage. We're going to try and keep our terror as low as possible. And I'm going to try and plot the bounce in between each of these. So next we'll go down into the vendor bite docks in order to keep it low. 
lower our speed so that the bats can get to us and we can get future supplies because we're about to use some up. We'll engage the enemy, illuminate thrice, and then fire. And if we get lucky with our illumination, we'll only go two. But we'll keep an eye on our illumination. So the first round, 22. Not so great, but we could do better on the second one than the first. 47, so we're still shy. We're going to fire two rounds. And so there it is. We've got ourselves 68, so we're ready to roll. First shot is away for ooh, 18 damage. We almost got him. If you wanted a combat log, you can actually look over here on the right-hand side, and you can pause the video if you wanted to get a more in-depth of what we've accomplished into the pot, and we'll gain ourselves another supply. The flesh is a little gamey, but salt them well enough, and they're quite edible. Okay, so apparently we've gotten by with bat meat from here. I think I'm going to cut to the east to this spot, and we'll check out Tana Chuk and see what it is. I don't even know what it is, so let's go take a little sneaky peeky. Now that we've had a little bit of the shooky, shooty, shooty, squeaky, squeaky from the bats. Wow, our terror is flying upwards. We'll fight these ones again, and we'll go with the same strategy as before. And this shouldn't take too long. We're almost out of time for the episode, but... We might get lucky right here. Let me get ready to cancel this other flare. But nope, we didn't break 50, so we got to go with the third flare just for two illumination. Disappointing. I was hoping that things would be a little bit more lit by now, because we like to keep things lit here at the Nerd Castle. I prefer it, so I hope that you prefer it. We only got 10 damage off on that one. Our irons have failed us. There we go. So we've managed to kill off the second group of bats. Into the pot. Because we just used one to offstay our hunger. Let's see what's up here. So we have Cant's Abyss. I want to go there, but I just can't. <laughs> we'll swing down to Tanachuk now and see if there's anything interesting out here. Because as we discover things, we do get more secrets that we can trade for either stat boosts. So we found Purawal Point. fight them one more time. Same strategy as before. The first illuminate. Ooh, good illumination on the first go, so we might buy ourselves a little time here. And, oh, we're over 51, so let's just start the bombardment now. First shot's away. For a little bit less than satisfactory damage, actually. Hopefully the next one is better. No, the next one was bad, too, so we might actually get bit here. We could do observation, but we're not very good at it, so I'm I'm nervous about spending any amount of time really forcing myself into that boat. So Tana Chuk actually doesn't appear to be anything useful. Moody's Light. Oh, yeah, there's Moody's Light right there. Now, I wonder if you can swing through the light properly. If you can off, you can like get rid of your terror while you're in it. Let's find out. Green glass and basalt. Salt and silence. Okay, so that lamp doesn't appear to actually slow your terror. So instead, what we'll do... Is, let's break off the episode here. My name is Splattercat. Thank you for joining me in the Nerd Castle for another episode of Sunless Sea. I hope you're enjoying the series so far. I'm going to try and upload this one a little faster than normal just because I like the game. And so I've got a ton of episodes that I'm preparing all in one big blast. I'll see you all in the next episode. Take care of everybody and hi-do.